Well, hello everyone, I am Fracture, and this is Let's Play Two Worlds 2 on the PC. Where are we going today? We are going to finish a quest in the Lion's Den. If you remember in the previous video, in between where I sped up the sections, you may have skipped past it and I don't blame you at all. While I was trying to find the quest for that guy's niece, I decided, geez, maybe it's night time, I'll go and take care of another quest while it's so late at night. I started this quest, Sammy the Bull, found the lion's den, killed the guy's guard, got the key, and then realized it was daylight and continued the other quest. So let's go back and finish this one. And we have to head back to the lion's den. So, time to obey the flag. Uh, is this it? This is it. So, if you missed that part of the video, I had to hide over in the corner there. The guard came out to take a leak. I killed him, took the key. So, in we go, I guess. I have a feeling this will turn ugly. Okay, so far so good. The key broke. Okay, so it's a one-time only thing, in other words. And as I recall, we're going to go in here and convince this guy of something. It's been too long. Got into line, caught like blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. He wants me to pay a visit to a guy named Sammy the Bull Mangano and threaten threaten into dropping out of the competition with Lex and S Okay, so basically threaten him so that he drops out of comp competition with Lexington. Okay, that sounds easy enough. And with him being dead, it's probably going to be a little more difficult than I'd hoped. Sammy Mangano? What the hell? Greetings. Who the hell are you? What happened here? I'm a man who solves problems. Mr. Mangano was a problem, so he's solved. You killed him? Who sent you here? We have a common employer. What? But he said I was supposed to scare this guy. I assure you that for a few seconds, Mr. Mangano was very scared indeed. <laughs> now, there's a hidden door nearby that leads to the cellar. We'll carry him down there and drop him into the sewer. There wasn't supposed to be a murder. That part is done. What I need you to do now is to clean up. And try to keep your voice down. Mangano's goons aren't far away. You will not tell me what to. Boss, is everything all... Hey! Get that son of a bitch. Oh, shit. Huh. <laughs> well said. This should be fun. Oh, God. <laughs> Learn how to take out your bow, you dumbass. Nice of the other guy to wait for us, though. <laughs> nice moves. Oh, no, it was you him. You think this is funny? Quite amusing, actually. Hmm. Now, I suggest that we hurry before more of Mr. Mangano's associates opt to play hero. They've locked the main door. Fortunately, we can take the scenic route through the cellar. I'm not doing a damn thing without an explanation. Patience. All will be explained. But for now, follow me. Uh... There. Now let's go. Hopefully we don't run into any more affiliates of the Mangano family. Nice painting. All right. Well, before we go, <sighs> loot these guys. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Here we are. What do you figure? This isn't going to go well. I figure it enough that I'm drawing a. Uh, Aha! Bet you're glad you met me. It's 
stay down. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, well, I actually, I actually enjoyed that. That was a bit of a challenge. And I actually took some damage. Alright. The more I use that multi-arrow, the more I like it. Despite having misgivings on using the points. That's the way I play. I, for some reason, I like hoarding things. Points, potions, whatever. That's not going to change. Sorry, I have a really scratchy throat today for some reason. So, despite not having, you know, the desire to spend all those points, I'm glad I did. So, kind of forced into it. And I guess I needed to be. It doesn't seem to have the same difficulty as some of these other skills that kind of throw off the aiming. Part of that's because it's it's a spread of arrows, so of course aiming isn't as critical. But it... I don't know, the knockback still works. And it's sort of the first arrow you fire in a fight, so you can get that first guy out of the way gives you an opportunity to run away so there's a, a lot of benefit to that so I still think we're going to find more of these guys call me paranoid one of Mangano's men. Hey, buddy! Have you ever considered buying a really good set of encyclopedias? Hmm. Wow, these guys have some major hit points. Stay down. like that the music is... Ah, uh, there it goes. Yeah, like I said, call me paranoid. <laughs> Good. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm not going to get out of this very smoothly. <laughs> Nothing like good, clean fun. I think it's time you started talking. Relax. You've done well. I suggest you go see our employer now. What? Wait a second. Everything has gone according to plan. Even your performance. Now, Mr. Lexington is waiting. Boy, can't anybody in this place just give me a straightforward quest? Everything's got to have, like, two diverging paths and mysterious oh boy okay well maybe we'll learn a little more when we go and hand this quest in obviously being tested for perhaps a bigger job more important gotta wonder how that other guy got through the sewers without fighting any of those guys though There he is. Welcome back. I'd appreciate more honesty in the future, Mr. Lexington. You took the and words right out of my mouth. Who you're speaking to? 
but you played the role well. I may have used. I'm a role player. I, I do that for a living. This was a setup, and you know it. What do you want? An apology? Hmm. I retain the right to change my plans as I see fit. Who is it you think you work for? So what was this? A test? Not exactly. I always planned on Mr. Mangano's disposal, but how you would fit into it depended on the circumstances, which were unknown. If you are only going to screw it up, what was the point? Am I a member now, or what? There are only two types of people in this world to me, my loyal man. My friends and the dead. Well, then it's a pleasure to be in your circle, sir. Likewise, good help is hard to find. All right, so we got the membership card to the lion, which means we can head on in there and talk to uh, some guy. I don't remember. But before we do that, I think I'll take a visit to the vendors. Use the opportunity to poke around in my inventory, see if I looted anything interesting during that minor battle, that sort of thing. So they're around here. If, as I always say, memory serves, and it seldom does. But in this case, Okay, a couple of rings. Actually, this gold seal ring, where did I pick that up? That was fairly recent. I think it was when I poisoned that guy that was outside of town. Doesn't look particularly valuable. Aside from maybe having a lot of those star points of whatever that means. I think I'll hold on to it for a while. Mm, these are both fairly good. Okay, well, I doubt they weigh very much. According to that, they probably weigh nothing. Because when something weighs something, it has the little weight. Like here, this weighs three units. Okay, so I'll leave those sitting around. Um, these aren't worth selling. At least not to this guy. Oh, that one is. All right, we'll sell a couple of these. All right, made a bit of cash. Anything worth actually buying? Poison arrow plus one. Again, I'll have a battle with myself if I want to buy. Hmm. Required level 28. Okay, I don't see anything of great value. Just check out these bows while I'm here. Nothing outstanding. And do we have anything else we want to unload while we're here? Jeez, I got more metal than I can ever use. Uh, but they're not worth anything to sell, so I will just dismantle them. And what about in here? We decided we were going to keep these even though I never used them. Let's get rid of these. <sighs> get rid of these traps. What do I keep selling? Poison resistance? Eh, whatever. I can probably make more of those if I should need them. And let's read these question marks. There may be something interesting. Students note the foxy brown brown god quickly jumps over the lazy varn. Well, I know the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog is a sentence with every letter of the alphabet in it. I wonder if that one does too. It was a thing you used to have to type in typing class way back when we actually used typewriters. A mnemonic device? Really? This is what we're paying for here? An education in magic? 
they could give a five-year-old? Dr. Krabath is a miserable, miserable fool, teaching us calligraphy instead of actual spells. Write this sentence 100 times. I say hang the bastard, or at least fire him. Mm. And in a magic school, firing him could mean many things. And Ryan's story. Give me a break. There have been times when bad handwriting killed a mage. For instance, you could be attacked by Neckers. Hmm. What is that? That's up at the drive-in. I guess you get attached by ne attacked by Neckers, walking in the woods only to find that the spell you jotted down earlier is illegible and then therefore unusable. Yeah, right. If that actually happened, I'm a scapulary midwife. Okay. Learn how to become a powerful warrior in 10 easy steps and 937 extremely difficult steps. On Time by Tai Lin. Horologer. Introduction, Chronometry, Philosophy, Bibliography. Oh boy. Um, all right, well, I may get bored halfway through this, but let's give it a shot. Introduction. So much has been said about time, and yet we, the living, still know so little about it. It is an arrow always moving forward, or is it simply an illusion of our perception? If it is, what does it mean for the choices we make? Are we truly in all places at all times, making all possible choices? Wow, the guy's a bit into uh, quantum theory here. Or just the ones we know about? These conundrums will be the subject of this inquiry. So, the two competing branches of thought on this subject seem to argue that time must be one or the other. Brilliant. It must be either forward-moving, current, like the arrow I mentioned above, or it must be ubiquitous, and we simply don't possess the faculty to see any other way but as a continuing se sequence. There's no argument that there is a sequence to us, as that is what our faculties allow. It wouldn't make sense to our survival if we could not relate uh, the reasons for our choices to their consequences. And that requires, or requires, time to have a forward momentum. Again, the arrow. But I'd like to propose a third option, that time is neither, neither an arrow nor a fundamentally ubiquitous structure of the universe which we simply, and quite limitedly, observe through our faculties as a string of actions and consequences for the necessity of our survival. No, I propose that time is a measurement, that it is an entirely human phenomena that must be observed to exist, that we create it based on need and therefore can destroy it based on overcoming that need. But more on this in the next section. Actually, that's, that's not too lame. Hmm. Interesting. Something to think about in a video game. Who knew? Chron chronometry. Temporal measurement takes two distinct modern forms, the hourglass and the calendar stone. We use one for short measurements and the other for long ones. Everyone lives their lives according to some schedule set by one, if not both, of these devices. And so it may be said that without the ability to measure time, our lives would fail to add up. We simply couldn't get very much done. The first human beings, as many other animals, used the solar and lunar cycles to justify their time scales. Slowly, more compact devices were invented to make life a little easier. And this predicated the formation of other burden-bearing machines. Schedules and habits are synonymous for anyone on a long enough time scale, and thus... It may be said that human success, our ability to build societies and create laws and art and intelligent thought, rests solely upon our learning how to measure time. Many inventions, most of them growing successively smaller, have been produced throughout the ages. The sundial, the crossbar, and my personal favorite, the hourglass. This is, it is this fine-tuning which has allowed modern man brief enough respite to ask why we measure time. And, it may be, that the answer to this question unlocks some vital, something vital about the way we live our lives. Philosophy. Time is authority. By its very nature, we bow to it, we worship it, we fear it. No one is immune to its rule, or so we think. Let's return to the proposition that time does not exist unless it is measured. Do you reflect on time? On its coming or going? During activities which require no measurement of it? Of course not. Who would? Unless, they got to uh, unless they've got a schedule to meet. And that's the point. 
meeting a schedule, meeting the demands of our habits, is the only reason we even care about time. It must be measured, observed to be of any consequence. At all other points in our life, it simply does not exist. But this is not just a theory of the mind. There is ample reason to believe that time is non-existent outside ourselves as well, that it is a human in invention. A simple thought experiment will suffice. With our as yet limited knowledge of the physical laws that govern the universe, we can safely say that the universe does not break down its own rules. Does not break its own rules. Can we agree on this? Good. Whatever occurs must occur through some natural process, and that natural process is governed by a law. Many theologians would disagree, but the evidence suggests that our universe has a definite beginning and will have a definite end. But if all things are governed by natural laws, is the universe itself not simply playing out a predetermined pirouette? Even if only, even if on the grandest scale, haven't all things already been determined? What then is time? The playing out? No, you say. That would simply be our observation once again. The events in the universe appear to unfold in one direction, from cause to effect. It's simply because we observe them that way. And that's my point. Time requires observation to exist. QED. Now, let's not even get into free will. Bibliography. Okay. Well, that was actually worth reading. I'm glad I stumbled into that. It actually reminds me of a science fiction book I read once called Quarantine. Um, it's what I'd call hard science fiction. I don't remember who wrote it. Um, ben Bova? No, no, it wasn't a well-known science fiction author. Right? I suppose that could be right. Anyway, Quarantine. You kind of had to have a background, well, not even a background, at least a basic understanding of quantum physics and quantum theory to even read the book. But I won't spoil it for you. It's an interesting book, nonetheless. Okay, and there's the umbrellas that attacked everybody. VU, hmm, Unix editor. Magicum Sequimer, property of Venificus University. And that's it. Doesn't scroll. This is to certify that the bearer hereof is an approved member of the Lion, and in, as such is entitled to enter the clubhouse at any time and enjoy the privileges within. Well, we know what that's for. Just arrived from aspiring <laughs> All right. Don't get left last year's wares, eh? Let's head to the flag. This is what I was doing. I, I got sidetracked reading that novel. So I kind of... Well, I guess we're going back, back to the lion. Hmm. Yeah, all right. I suppose I could poke around in, in the streets looking for another quest. But we'll finish off this video with me at least progressing this one one more go. He's new, the maitre d'. Welcome, sir. Is this your first time joining us? It is. How wondrous for you, sir. Many of our patrons often say they wish they could relive the pleasure of discovering the lion for the first time. Your membership card, please. Oh, right. Here, let me just... Take your time, sir. Display your membership card. Uh, alright. Uh, nope, not like that. Uh, this... Presumably my membership card is that. Wonderful, sir. This door will lead you to the inner lounge. Enjoy your visit. Welcome to the lion. Thanks. Enter the main lounge and find Professor K Professor Canis. That's who we were looking for. Okay. New location found. Inner entrances to the lion. Hmm, 
nice place. I ate in a sushi restaurant in Shanghai that looked a lot like this, actually. Although, this is kind of, I think, closer to Japanese architecture, but the the round with the, the glass ceiling is very memorable. Okay, we are looking for probably this guy straight ahead. No, this is just a dice. No, there he is. Care to make a wager, friend? Not really. Professor Kenneth? Professor? <laughs> I suspected someone was asking around about me. You betray yourself using that title here. I suppose you've been looking for me because you want something? Well, get on with it. I'm not here for a favor. I need to know about the swallows. Uh. I just came from the Tower of Fangs. Well, you've certainly taken longer than expected. So you knew I was coming? It was the most reasonable conclusion, considering current events. Enough with the cryptic responses. Are you willing to talk or not? I'm not a friend to you. I never will be. But we may share a common cause. That's good to hear. I no longer have the passions of a young man. I prefer to enjoy my twilight years rather than spend them in persecution. And yet here you are. I tried to avoid this moment, truly I did. Well, my boy, before we begin with your questions, allow me to pose one of mine. Are you so blinded by your pursuit of revenge and power that you can't see your own self? That is what this is about, isn't it? Look long into the mirror, lad. It may be that the thing you despise also exists in you. I'm not like him. Of course you're not. Not yet. He's the one with the crown. But evil is not something a man is born with. It only comes after years of compounding action. Can you tell me that if that crown was on your head, You'd give it up and walk away? You're deluding yourself. There is no moral law that cannot be overruled with the sword. Abandon this path while you still can. Besides, you do not possess the power to stop him. All I'm asking you for is a means to an end. Yes, you want to use the sight to break the barrier to ultimate truth. For if you have that, you can know Gandahar's heart. Find a weakness. One cannot create the future without tearing down the past. Isn't that what you young radicals think? Let me tell you something. Your kind has never offered anything in replacement of the world you would burn that could not be achieved through peace and diplomacy. It is always violence with you. Violence and death. I was told the scavengers sometimes use the site. If you're not going to help me, maybe they can. Where can I find them? I never said I wouldn't help you. I'm only hoping my help comes before you follow through with your plans. But I can't make your mistakes for you. You can find them on the edge of the swallows, where they make their camp. Just remember, the curse of sight is that seeing is believing. Meet Eric to learn the sight. Okay, I'm not really that sure about what that means. I think I'll just check my inventory one final time. And I forgot to dismantle these, so we'll go ahead and do that. Still nothing waiting to be upgraded, which is a shame. But we'll live. Okay, and with that, as always, I thank you for watching, I thank you for listening, and I encourage you to leave comments, suggestions, or infantile abuse. I promise I read it all, and if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel or give me the thumbs up. And it sounds like I'll be doing another co-op commentary with Mr. Smart Donkey over the next couple of days, so keep your eyes open for that. Depending on when I post this video, 
that might already be available. And I'll post a link to that on my channel. Anyway, have a good one. We'll see you next time, folks.